Hey, I'm Nate with the Ask a Christian podcast, and for the last, I don't know, 10 years, my goal has been to go through and clip out little snippets of pertinent clips and nice condensed five, 10 minute clips of topics so everyone can get a nice, concise answer quickly. And uh, so far that hasn't happened. So in this new year, that is my goal. Uh, well, it was my goal, and then I realized that most of the stuff was lost to the annals of time in YouTube's history somewhere. So um, I thought it would be way easier to just make these short little videos about stuff we've covered a thousand times before. So this one I'm going to start with is the different versions of the Bible, how there's so many translations and every Bible is so vastly different than the next Bible. And that's just nonsense. And the reason I love talking about this topic is because it's so easy to prove. So fact check everything I'm gonna say. This is quick, it's easy, it's painless, you can do it in 10 minutes. So for example, when people say, usually because they're dishonest and they're coming from a deceitful position and they know what they're doing, but they have a point to prove, so if they can trip up a Christian, that's fine with them. They don't care about deceiving you. Um, or it's just out of ignorance and people really don't know. And they're like, well, why are there so many different versions of the Bible? Why, why is this? Why can't they just have one? Well, there's lots of reasons. But the important thing is the same message we get from one Bible is the same meaning and same message you're going to get from any other ones of the Bible. So whether it's New American Standard Bible, whether it's English Standard Vi Version, whether it's NLT, whether it's NIV, CSB, all of these things, they do different things like different editorial decisions. They'll number their paragraphs and verses a little bit different. They may use a semicolon instead of a comma. Crazy, I know. Um, they may use synonyms. So if Jesus says he's the gate and another one says he's the doorway, the point is, you got to go through Jesus. That's the point. That's the message. So there was another group in, in the Bible times who focused on every jot and tittle of the law and were overly litigious. Those were the Pharisees. It didn't work out so well for them. Don't be a Pharisee. The point is, the message we're supposed to get is the message we got. In all of the Bibles, they say the same thing. To prove this, to fact check this, go to Bible Gateway right now. BibleGateway.com. You can pull up a little, there's an open little book icon that looks like it's opening. You can bring up any chapter, any verse you want, and verses, bring up a whole book. You can parallel five Bibles, at a, five translations at a time, side by side. So bring up the NIV, bring up NLT, bring up what? Just pick Bibles. Just pick them, five at a time, and you can see how all of them are exactly the same message. Some of them may, if you bring up King James, King James you're going to be reading like Shakespeare. Um, no wonder we simplified it. The same meaning, the same messages right there, but New King James simplified it a little more, made it a little bit easier on the ears. And uh, some are more literal and they'll give more word for word and it doesn't flow as good because they're more literal the words. And others, like the New Living Translation, are a little bit more, um, a little more flowing and fluid. So it will sound easier because they'll use words that we commonly use every day. Um, th these are the answers. So parallel five translations at a time when you're done with those and you see if you're not convinced that, oh, hey, I do get the same message and meaning, great, go through five more. After that, five more. Just keep going through them until you're satisfied. And then the last thing is people will say, well, what about the, you know, all the books? How do you know which ones you, you really should have? Because some Bibles, uh, you know, will have 66 books. Others will have the Apocrypha. Some will have different books. Hand wave that away. Doesn't matter. If you really want to know every everything that would have ever been considered scripture, uh, go grab an Ethiopian Bible. You can buy one for like 15 bucks on Amazon. The Ethiopian Bible, it's got everything that could have been considered scripture. We're not counting the Gnostic Gospels because those are like, you know, in the 4th century or 3rd century at best. So those weren't around. Um, anyway, so everything that was around and could have been considered uh, scripture, they threw it in the Ethiopian Bible. They, they even put the Book of Enoch in there. And the book of Enoch was never scripture, it was never canon, it was never Torah, never. Uh, but they threw that in there. So when you read this, you can see everything that could have ever possibly been, you know, considered to be in any Christian Bible. And what you're going to find is you're going to be really bored really quick. Because almost none of this extra stuff, these extra books, have anything to do with God or Christianity. The overwhelming majority is just history and socioeconomic pomp and circumstance of which idol-worshipping king is going to war against which other idol-worshipping king. It's like, it's like the Bible version of the movie 300. It's just a bunch of pagan idol-worshippers waging war on people, and then eventually um, it comes to Israel's doorstep. Things like that, like in the Maccabees. If you read Ezra, you'll see some prophecies, you'll see some prayers, you'll see some more, more proverbs. But by and large, it has little to do with God, and it has almost nothing to do with Christianity and Jesus. So that's what you're going to find. You're going to be really bored. Some of it is pretty interesting and engaging, but a lot of it is just stuff that is peripheral to Israel and the geography and the history of the people who lived in these times. But it is very, very 
uh, almost wholly irrelevant to Christianity. Um, that being said, go for it and fact check me. That one will take you a little bit longer than the Bible translations, but there you go. There's your answer. So with confidence, you can grab any Bible, any translation, any version, and you're going to get the same message. And when it really comes down to salvation issues and what ultimately matters, you could fit that on a post-it note. It's believing in the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ, his atonement for your sin, and faith alone uh, that you're saved by grace in him. So believe that and you are good and you're sealed with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will guide you and live in you and lead you to all truth and righteousness. So you could fit that on a post-it note, uh, what the ultimate message of the Bible is. So while everyone else is off arguing about should it be 66 books, should it be 70 whatever books, should it be 80 something books, and how do you know which way is up? Every single one of those books and versions is going to have that some post-it note. Death, burial, resurrection of Christ. Call the name of the Lord. You'll be saved. Confess, repent, believe the gospel. Have eternal life. It is not that difficult. So enjoy your new year. We'll uh, hope I can keep it together long enough to do these uh, quick little things. Bye.